Good morning, grade fours, and welcome to another lesson of natural science with me, Miss Kun. It is awesome to be here with you this morning. The weather is beautiful today, and we've got a lot to be thankful for in this beautiful world that we live in. Remember that if you've got any questions, please email them to grade four at worksheetcloud.com. Right, are you ready for my amazing, brilliant, wonderful joke of the day? <laughs> Okay, so today's joke is, what do stars and false teeth have in common? What do stars in the sky and false teeth, what do they have in common? I bet you didn't guess that they both come out at night. So you take false teeth at night and the stars come out. Okay, I'm sure you know exactly. I don't need to explain. You know, you know the, you know the jokes by now. All right, so today, boys and girls, we are going to be looking at the phases of the moon. So in our last lesson, we looked at a little bit of information on um, the first landings on the, in the moon, on the moon in 1969. And today, we're going to look at the different phases of the moon. So let's have a look. So this is going to be a fun lesson. I really enjoy learning about the phase of the moon and I love teaching it even more. So I hope that you enjoy. You just sit back, relax and listen to me and watch the lesson. All right. So the first question that I want to ask all of you is why does the moon appear to change shape in the sky? So why does it appear to change shape? Because when we look up at the sky at night, the moon which I'm sure some of you have noticed, comes in many different shapes. Sometimes you see a big, round, beautiful lit moon. Sometimes you see part of the moon. So how does it change shape? Why does it change shape? Um, and that's what we're going to look at today. So here is our Earth. We've got a big, beautiful sun over there. And we've got our moon. Hello, moon. Okay, so now... As you can see, our moon is orbiting our Earth. And an interesting fact is that it takes 28 days for the moon to orbit once around the Earth. So it takes 28 days from the start. Is, I wouldn't say starting position, but if we have to say starting position from one place all the way around, it takes 28 days. Okay, just like... The Earth, it, for the Earth to orbit the Sun, it takes 365 days. So the word orbit means to travel around once. Okay, now the only reason why we can see the Moon is because it is a reflection of the light from the Sun. So the Moon doesn't have its own natural light source. There's no, the man on the Moon is not sitting there with a little switch that's switching it up and down to say, okay, the lights are on or the lights are off. Right, so there is no switch um, on, the, in, on the Moon the moon does not create its own um, heat, or, sorry, not heat, light. And so the only reason why we see the moon is that you can see, as you, if you remember from our previous lesson about the sun, the sun is massive and the sun emits the solar energy. Um, and that light energy then bounces off the moon and we actually see it. So that the moon, the parts of the moon that we see is the reflection from the sun. Okay, now an interesting fact is that remember only one half of the moon is ever lit. Now what that means is wherever you are in the earth, we only see one half just like the earth. Half of the earth is only ever lit because that when it is lit, we experience daytime and the other half of the moon is experience, ugh, the other half of the earth, sorry, is experiencing nighttime. So remember, it's just like if you shine a light on yourself or if you are standing and you see a shadow, uh, if you're standing in the sun and you see a shadow, half of you is lit, the person, the part of you behind you is not lit. Okay, and so wherever that part is facing the sun, whether it's the moon or the earth, it is lit. And so for the moon, only half of the moon is ever lit at any given time. As the moon travels around the earth, we see different amounts of the lit side of the moon. So as I mentioned before, that as it travels around the moon, and then remember it takes 28 days, we see parts of the moon, depending on where that position is of the moon, um, we see different parts of the lit side of the moon. 
Okay, and we are going to look at all those different parts. So now we come to the actual phases of the moon. So if we start with day one, when the moon is positioned in this place over here, the moon is between the sun and the earth. It is right in the middle. And so when the moon is in this particular position over here, you can see that we, if we are, say for example, over there and we are looking at the moon, we don't see a moon in the sky because we are experiencing the dark side of the moon over here. We are not seeing the lit side. You can see that there's the lit side. We are looking at the dark side over there. And at that point, so sometimes if you're looking out up at the, at the sky at night and you looking and you, you think to yourself, where on earth is that moon? I can't see the moon most probably it is the new moon and we won't be able to see it and so the dark side of the moon is then facing us so we would sit and say that it is day one now the new moon as you, as i said looks something like this we won't be able to see it uh, this little line over here is just to sort of show you an outline of the moon but you won't usually see the outline of a new moon. Okay, so remember, when we don't see the moon and it's dark, we see the dark side of the moon, we call it a new moon. Right, the next um, phase of the moon is called a waxing crescent. Now, the reason why it's day four, there are in total, there are eight phases of the moon that we that we are going to look at today. And remember, it's not a, a, a sudden stop start movement of the of the moon. So it's not like the moon travels from a new moon straight to a waxing crescent. It takes time for the moon to travel and in that traveling phase it goes from a dark moon that we don't see to almost we start to see a sliver of a moon and so it's a gradual process so by the time we see the next phase which is called the waxing crescent it is pretty much on around day four and the position of the moon is somewhere over here so you can see it started over here here was our new moon and it's moved over here to our waxing crescent now the word waxing is very important because the word waxing actually means to get bigger and what i mean by that is that with the actual waxing crescent it starts with a little sliver as you can see over here and in the next phase you can see that that sliver gets a little bit bigger now remember the only reason why we are seeing this part over here because where we are positioned on on earth we see that part and that part is the reflection of the sun and where the moon is positioned in, re in relation to us. Right, so we only see that little part. Waxing means bigger and a crescent is that little section over there. So waxing crescent is the next phase of the moon. Okay, right, now we come to the next phase which is called the first quarter. Now, at this particular phase, so from that little sliver, we now have exactly half of the moon. We can look up in the sky and we see half of the moon is lit. Okay, so it's moved um, a quarter of the way. Now, this is quite important because we don't say it is a half moon. The reason why we call it a first quarter is because the moon has now traveled a quarter of its journey. Because there are eight phases of the moon, we say that the moon travels um, uh, eight different times. And if we take those eight parts of the moon, the first quarter of its traveling um, is at this particular place and we see half of the moon. So do you see it's getting bigger? So it was first a waxing crescent. Now we call it a first quarter where we see half of the moon, right? And remember first quarter, is only called first quarter because it explains its journey. It has traveled a quarter of the way. Okay. Now, the next phase of the moon continues with the waxing. Remember, waxing means getting bigger. And it is a funny name, but it's called gibbous. And so around approximately day 10, we see a waxing gibbous. So have a look. The moon is over here, more or less. And when you look up at the moon, this is what it looks like. Right. So you can see it's gotten bigger. It looks like somebody's just taken a, a bite out of that that moon but we're starting to see more and more of the moon as it's moving and orbiting our earth okay and we can see most of the moon so when i say most not all of it but we see most of the moon 
Right, now that brings us to day 14. So this is more or less half of the journey of the moon. So it started over here as a new moon, and now we have a full moon. Now a full moon is completely the opposite of a new moon. The, the moon is now positioned on this side of the earth. Now the earth is playing piggy in the middle, and the earth is between the sun and the moon. And because the earth is over here, and the moon, you can see that the um, the moon is in direct, that half of the moon that is directly lit from the um, sun and is in full exposure, we see it as uh, a full solid moon, right? Remember that this is half of the moon. On the other side of the moon, it is still dark. But we see the side that we see, we see that beautiful, big, round, full moon in all of its glory. Okay, so we we can see all of the part that is lit up. And remember, it is direct, it is opposite to a new moon. Full moon, we're now halfway through the journey of the moon. So now what? We've gone from having sort of a black, no moon, dark moon. It started getting bigger with a waxing crescent. Then we were at the first quarter where we saw half of the moon. It then got a little bit bigger where we saw a waxing gibbous. Now we see the full moon. What do you think happens next? How do you think the cycle of the moon is going to start to come to an end? What do you think? So if you guessed it's going to get a little bit smaller, you are correct. So we saw that the moon was big, bright, and beautiful. And now we are going to, it's going to get a little bit smaller. And we now describe it as waning gibbous. So over here, when, we, when the moon is getting bigger, we called it a waxing gibbous. Now, when it looks like a chunk of the moon has been taken out, but on the other side, because obviously it's moving around, we say it is a waning gibbous. And so the word waning actually means getting smaller. So remember the difference between waxing and waning. Waxing means getting bigger. Waning means getting smaller. Okay, don't forget. So as it's getting smaller, we start off with a waning gibbous. And it looks like I said, it looks like somebody's taken a chunk of the moon out of the moon, but now from the other side. Because remember, as the moon is going around, we're seeing a little bit less of the moon as it's starting to move towards the new moon phase where it's completely dark. Okay, or we see the completely dark side of the moon. Right, so after our waning gibbous, we now have the moon that is on this side of the earth and it is called the last quarter. So now we see half of the moon, but that half of the moon that is lit, you can see we only see the half that is completely lit. But remember, we call it the last quarter because it is now the last leg of the journey, the last quarter it's got left to travel. So remember, it started over here as a new moon. It traveled a quarter of the way over here. It was then the first quarter. The next quarter over here, we had a full moon. And the third quarter over here, we classified as the last quarter because it only has a quarter of the journey left to travel. Okay, remember that we only see half of the moon. So it is the other half of the moon that we saw previously at the um, first quarter. Right, and then around day 24, so do you see we're slowly coming to the end of our 28-day cycle, or should I say the 28-day orbit of the moon around the Earth. And from the first quarter, oh, sorry, from the last quarter, we now move into the waning crescent. So oppositely, we had the waxing crescent, where we had that little sliver of the moon that was going to get bigger as it was orbiting around the Earth. Now we have a waning crescent, which means getting smaller, and it's still the sliver, the word crescent, um, I always used to describe it as a little sliver of the moon. So now we still have that little sliver of the moon, but it is now on the opposite side and it is getting a little bit smaller. Remember that this picture and this picture over here of the moon and the earth, it shows at all times that we only see half of the um, part of the moon and the earth that is lit and the other half that is in complete darkness. So you must imagine, I want you to use your imagination um, that if you're standing somewhere on earth and you're looking up at the moon, 
you are seeing that little sliver and that is what you are going to see you will see that waning crescent looking like that all right that only that little sliver that is left of the moon right and then boys and girls we get to back to we now have day 28 which is from our starting all the way around this is our ending period and we have our new moon which is how we end off our cycle and it will be the beginning of the new cycle of the moon right and remember with the new moon we specifically see the dark side of the moon so we don't usually see a moon in the sky so remember like i said before if you look up at the sky and you sit and think where on earth is that moon it is most probably the new moon right so here is just an image a little bit um, clearer to show you the different phases of the moon so remember starting with the new moon and for those of you um so we start with the new moon then we st we go on to a waxing crescent remember waxing means getting bigger so you can see that we've got a little sliver that little little sliver gets a little bit bigger we see half of the moon but we call it the first quarter then it gets a little bit bigger even more we call it a waxing gibbous then we have a full moon where we see all the moon and all of its glory we then move on to the waning phase waning means getting smaller and so we have a waning gibbous so you can see it's the opposite of that one over there then we have the last quarter where we see the half of the moon the other half of the moon we have a waning crescent a little bit smaller and then we come back to a new moon where it is pitch black we see the dark side of the moon right so how was that did you enjoy it did you have fun i'm sure you've heard um i'm sure you've learned something new the words gibbous the words crescent the words waxing and waning and so I hope you enjoyed today's lesson, boys and girls. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. I shall see you next time from me, Miss Kun, Hakuna Matata. And remember, be kind to one another. Bye.